Let's talk about plotting space curves in Maple. Here might be two standard examples. Plot this particular space curve in R3, written in component forms, or plot this particular plane curve in R2, in IJ notation. The starting point for either of these things is to load a suite of packages for Calc 3 called the plots package. And you do it by typing with plots, and you can end it with a colon. Now that you've got that taken care of, we can get to work. Plotting a space curve is a lot like plotting a regular curve, except that the command is called space curve. But its syntax is otherwise the same. You give it the name of a function, or the values of a function, in this case, cosine t, t, sine of 2t, in component form, and then you give it a range of t values, semicolon, and you'll plot it. And you'll get something like this out, a curve that's rotatable, orientable in three-dimensional space, so you get some idea of what this curve is. Kind of a weird coily shape right here. What Maple's doing is it's taking essentially 50 values between minus 5 and 5, plotting those, and then connecting the dots. And you can kind of see that the graph is a little bit angular right here. There are a couple of things that you can do to make this graph a little bit more readable. For the first part, you have absolutely no frame of reference. I have no idea where the origin or the axes are. So you can add a command called axes. And the usual one would be axes equals normal. And that's going to go and stick in a pair of, or a set of x, y, z axes. But again, they're not marked anywhere. You can't tell who's x and y and z. So usually when you have axes normal, you'd follow it up with labels. And you'd set the labels equal to whatever you'd like to call them, but traditionally x, y, and z, so I can figure out who's who. So now I have that this right here is the z-axis, this right here is the y-axis, and this right here is the x-axis. So that's giving me some idea right here. Apparently this is something that seems to be wiling its way along the y-axis. Some things I can do to help me understand this a little bit better is I can make the curve a standard color by typing color equals red. Now the plane curve comes out as just a single color, so I don't quite have that, that uh, color gradient going through it. I could also plot it over a longer range of values, say from minus 10 to 10. And this is the nice part about Maple, is you can keep going back and tinkering with your command until it works better. Well, that's getting me a better idea. Apparently, I'm doing some sort of spirally zigzag as I work my way up. When I stare at it straight down the y-axis, there's the z and the x lines, I'm seeing something that looks like a figure eight. And if I stare at it from the sides, I'm seeing something vaguely sinusoidal. Of course, it's really choppy, and that's because I'm plotting the same number of points but stretched out more. So to smooth up a graph, you can tell Maple to plot several more points by the command num points, and say, set it equal to 100 is a good starting value, and this is the curve with 100 points plotted. If I double that to 200 points, this is the curve with 200 points plotted, and it's very, very clean looking now. There's one last, last little feature which is kind of neat. If you might notice that this axis goes from minus 10 to 10, but these ones are going from 1 to 1, so the graph is very, very warped. It's very, very stretched. If you click on the 1 to 1 button up here, you can actually get a very real version of what this is without any warping or scaling. It sometimes hides some of the detail, but you do get a flavor that it's not nearly as tightly coiled as I was initially led to believe. So how about plotting a plane curve? Well, a plane curve is nothing more than a space curve whose last coordinate is 0. So I could type this in as cosine of t times the sine of 2t, comma, the sine of 3 times t, times the sine of t, and then make the last coordinate 0. And since everything in here is trigonometric, I'm just going to plot this from 0 to 2 pi, since that seems like a reasonable amount to do. Now when I do this, I have the same thing problems I had before right here. I want to put in the axes so that I can see it, so axes equal normal. I'd like to label them, so let's label the axes x, y, and z. And I'm going to color code the curve blue so I can see it a little bit better. And that means if I could move myself around here, if I get it, so there's the z-axis floating up here. If I look at it from the top of the z-axis, here's the x-axis, and here's the y-axis, and that's what the curve looks like. Unfortunately, it'd be helpful if I could somehow rotate this and get it in the right spot without all of this clicking around. And in fact, it's possible to do that. The idea is to add one more command. You type in exactly this, orientation equals bracket 270, comma, 0. And when I redo this, this is the view straight down the z-axis, so the x and the y planes are where they are. And that's what this plane curve looks like, kind of a curvy triangle. And so those are the basics for plotting plane curves and space curves.